So we'll see four. Um, I will update the agenda in the meantime. So last time we had lots of demos from um, demos from Dean. Well, maybe we should have had lots of demos from Dean, but we had a few because of time constraints. Maybe we'll get more today. We'll see. There will be lots of um, topics. So demos. What kind of demos do we have or can we have? If I take everything from Dean, for instance, just so we don't forget about them. Um, which ones did we see last time? We saw the headless recipe. I think we saw the taxonomies. Oh, we saw tags. I don't remember. Maybe we didn't see. So what does Dean have to say? Um, other demos from anyone? Okay, I uh, will see if there are some PRs that need to be demoed. Um, so if I take, so let me fetch everything. And I can filter on the dev branch. So if I keep on the dev branch, we'll see everything. I try not to spend too much time on everything because there's been three weeks and some people were super active. So um, the last time was 12.17 here. Um, and we didn't see these ones. So fix RTL support. Um, just no auto pollution existing content item that is a draft. Okay, publish content task. Um, move the attribute to Orchard Core Media Core for the module to use. So, an attribute to define um, media size limits here that we made for media, but now it's in abstractions, I assume or in a project instead of the module so that we can reuse it. Uh, change form action name, the register user class as an accessible liquid member, otherwise we could not um, use the user class. Um, get shape table atomicity, some concurrency issues I assume with the get shape table, which returns the list of shapes and their templates uh, for a specific theme. Uh, Auto dev mode in any environment. Okay. Uh, fix locking on file content definition store by making it a singleton. Um, Claire was back now on Orchard Core. Um, Docs, and I assume also I saw a PR from Gert at some point, or maybe an issue. Gert and Claire working uh, from South Africa, and there have been some of the oldest users of Orchard, contributors. So docs fix broken link to code generation templates, handle error while rendering resources. So there was an exception, I think. Yes, that was breaking stuff. So now he's handling the exception and also supporting the rest of the enumeration values here. Um, better documentation, better documentation, because newcomers have to read the documentation and then have feedback on that. Clean email tax task for better perf. Um, well, yes, sure. So removing unnecessary dependencies, updating seri log format and libraries, I assume, versions, okay. Everything has been removed. So I assume this one only is used. Yes, good. Fixing localization set cloning. There was some properties that were not set correctly. I don't remember what, but made sense at the time. Plus missing the at here, okay. Fixes file content definition scoped cache. Reaction to the previous change. 
um, set culture deal to LTR and not string empty apparently. Okay. Update async not awaited. Okay, missing. Yeah, that wasn't a bug. Someone find a bug like scope dispo, something like that. Or I don't know. But yes, here this async call was not awaited because it's in the JavaScript um, global method. So we can't use async await. We have to uh, wait for the result here in line. Added is section defined method on. on um, the base result pages, so you can check if the layout has a custom zone. Um, because some templates might use it, and it will not work with our um, custom layout. So I hear a beep, admit Dave. That's when I thought I had admitted everyone by default. Let me check on Skype also, by the way. All good. Validate base URL property in the controller, so we can't type anything that is not a URL. I remove the localizer because they are not necessary anymore, the stubs. Um, we merge the big PR from Jasmine improves um, Lucene module. Um, I think we got a, a demo recently, and then we only merged it after. And as a reminder, this lets um, us select which type we want to index for each index, and also define a new um, a new uh, analyzer property for index. So it will analyze using custom analyzer mostly for each language. So each language, each index can provide a custom stemmer and um, um, normalizer for each culture. And there is a third option, which is filter the content items of this index per culture. So you could say, I just want the content items of whatever language, and also use this specific analyzer, usually with the same language, for these specific types. So you can do that um, in the index settings now, when you create an index, which is super nice. Uh, it also contains some perf improvements, but I, maybe we have, we have merged them before, not sure. Um, and and the settings are also stored in a database now and not on the file system. Um, so that would be super useful for later. Uh, plus also some better support for the um, Elasticsearch queries. Well, the, the querying DSL that we use that is from Elasticsearch. So some uh, more queries are supported. Um, big job on the Lucene queries here or Lucene indexing. Um, added name of HTML attribute name for dictionary. FXC, yeah, that's a very specific thing that you can use the prop prefix to um, bind a variable name to a tag helper. So here, the thing, and here, chat. Um, okay, we can link to that also. Um, liquid console log filter and docs. So Dean made a console log liquid filter, the same as the console log uh, resort helper, but for liquid. So what it will do is it will, it will output any object or shape onto the, um, the browser console, um, so for debugging. And only, is it doing it only if we are in dev mode? I don't remember. Um, I think we talked about it. Or make an option. Did we talk about it? Only dev mode. I don't see the code for that. Uh, 
Um, yeah, it checks there for um, production. Oh, correct. I didn't see the sign. Okay. Good. So yeah, and yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's very useful. So you can keep it, and only in dev you will see the value. Super useful. And the same in um, Razor now as well, I think. The what? The the same um, production mode only in Razor as well for the Razor helper. Okay. A liquid update jQuery UI i19 CDN URL. So this is the only place where we can find it. Is it? Last time we talked about it, I thought I had pointed to JS deliver. Or maybe it's changed later on. Because I'm not sure that works in China, but JS Deliver works in China. Yeah, I think we're using the code.jQuery for all the jQuery. Okay, and that works in China? Well, it's hard to test, isn't it? Um, but but the, the, error, the error message was only for this um, 118 thing from the Ajax thing, so I could see the screenshot. So I assume the uh, other jQuery is working fine. Oh, yeah, okay. I should keep it <laughs> Remove same side cookie setting to keep balance compatibility, but we will also have to change something related to that because it's not the last, the uh, final fix. Uh, Kevin and uh, Mathis are currently talking about it on the issue. Um, the solution might be, or will probably be, to have uh, some settings to define which clients, which browsers, uh, will get which value. And there is a breaking change coming uh, next month from Chrome that will break some sites based on which options we put here. Um, upgrade to SPNet 3.1. Finally, so everyone must know about that because now it's required 3.1 and the templates. Some were missing some things. Um, then Antoine updating the versions. Localizer should work with inner classes, okay, extracting the PO files. Um, no more need to overload page loader matchup policy because the bug has been fixed in ASP.NET 3.1. Fixed resource manifest typo. Yeah, I th oh, this one, SHA. Recapture documentation, uh, use get language direction everywhere. Okay, extension method to do that. Job. Update site link because we have the new Orchard Core.net uh, URL. Content project shape example. So oh, updating an example. Okay. Yeah, because this is liquid and this was a copy paste from Razor. Um, so this is adapting for liquid. Closing tags to editor. That's DIN that fixes, I assume, the taxonomy editor because it was broken until we have the better editor that he showed us. Um, so that is template Azure blob and data production blob configuration with liquid. Yes, big PR. Um, so the idea being that you can customize the base path of the blob storage for um, media and data protection and also the container that you want to use um, for these two and this can use a template in liquid so if you have some custom holes to name your container or the base path then you can define it this way and you have access to the shell settings and 
what else? Container name. No. Shell settings, container name, property, and the base path. Property are the only templatable properties. Okay. Yep, so this gives all the flexibility you need to create, like for instance, to use the same container for all your tenants and then use a custom folder for each tenant or a custom container for every tenant and then the same path, for instance, up to you. And then you can also ask for the container to be created um, and it will be done when the tenant is started. So thank you, Dean. Six typo in documentation. Uh, Jeremy, note that later configurations replace earlier ones. Yeah, because the configuration can come from different uh, sources and then the order will matter because the, this order will override the previous values. Scoped liquid template context. So there are many changes in this one. Um, the, the goal was uh, to improve perf on the liquid uh, rendering um, because we were creating a new template context and resolving all the services for each template. So now Jean Thierry made it in a way that for each request we create a single template context, but we we'll reset the variables every time we use it, and each template context will have the um, URL helper, the service providers, all the services or the requests, all the properties you might want to reuse in the same request. So it's uh, it's making things uh, faster, and it was visible on the, the perf charts. and also reordered some things. I thought we didn't need that anymore. Interesting. Um, so just perf improvements. You get, I knew he had made a PR. Fixing a route name. Email test form action. Yes, and then reacting to the change here. So using index, well, yeah. The two commits need to go together. Missing translations in OpenID module. Here, good job. Fixed routing issue with remote instance. We are using the wrong route. Uh, register service incorrect module, which was reverted later because it was not in the correct in the incorrect module. Fixed cache tag helper. Apparently, we were rendering the same thing again and again with the cache tag helper. So now it should be fixed. So the cache was not working correctly. Lucene indexing small fixes. Okay. Um, fixed max number of results validation when using variables. Okay. Bug. New trembling versions. Clean CS approach files. Uh, constraint admin controllers to mapped routes, which is still ongoing. There is still a, something done on this um, issue. The idea being that since we can now change the prefix of the admin URLs, uh, admin routes, because there is an option, we also need to ensure that every admin controller uh, actions have the correct prefix. So Dean made um, a constraint, an MVC constraint, that would check for that. So if we are in the admin and it doesn't start with slash admin or whatever the option is, admin URL prefix, then it won't, it will fail the route resolution. So you won't be able to access the, the endpoint. But this was too, it was working too well because some routes didn't use this URL prefix and people could not access, for instance, some features in the media and other pages. So we did um, change somewhere later that um, we changed that to actually just log it for now to detect all the pages that are missing. And then Dean made another PR uh, to fix all the routes that were found to be missing, the admin uh, URL prefix. And then someone else finds an issue saying, my routes are broken now. <laughs> um, so even if we take 
care of our routes. We are breaking uh, custom or users' modules' routes uh, because maybe they didn't create a custom route. So the current solution is to have something um, automatic that will define a default route using the same pattern as before, but adding the admin URL prefix. And if people want to create a custom route that starts with admin URL prefix also, they will be able to do. But we should not break existing uh, sites just to have the, well, we should not have to force users to have nice routes to be able to define the prefix. So it's um, work is still going on on that one. Uh, updated um, dependencies, script dependencies, fixed localization access or names. Everything now is T is S for a string localizer and H for an HTML localizer, unless in a view where it's T for translation. It's just convention, nothing imposed here. So reverting the services which were not moved in the correct place, actually. Document recipes, new listing settings, so new documentation, uh, well, documentation on the updated um, Lucene index setting. So now from a recipe to create an index, it's no more like, oh, just the value of the name of the index. You provide the name and then which analyzer you want. Um, if you want to index the latest, so the draft version or just the published version, so latest or not, um, that's also a new thing. That's very important. And the goal is that when you create an index to search, for instance, from the admin, you want to be able to search for anything, even the draft versions. So you will put index latest to true so that the, the index contains the latest version all the time. Uh, but for a publicly visible index, you don't want that to be false so that people search results and search um, queries will only search for published content. And here you will pass the list of types you want to index. Okay, but all all these values are reflected in the in the UI for configuration. This is for recipe steps. Um, and by the way, I don't think we have um, export steps for that. We need that. A fixed content localization route. Um, that's the change I mentioned earlier with being. Um, um, more flexible with the admin action constraint, just to log something right now. Um, for company set again in some places, content item as a liquid property, yeah, because the previous change on the liquid um, template context um, broke some properties available in templates. So if your alias part and auto route part patterns or workflow uh, patterns don't work anymore, it's because uh, of the previous change. And by the way, does this change also contain the workflow? Yes, okay, so that fixes everything. Um, just a note on that, um, because I, I saw Dean also commented um, on that matter on Gitter. So William, you hear an echo because you are still connected on Skype. So you are hearing my voice from Skype and from Teams. So if you quit Skype, then you won't hear an echo. Good. Um, so I was saying, um, Notepad. So, um, in an auto route pattern, you do something like content item dot uh, dot whatever display text. Okay, by Slugify, for instance, and that will generate a nice um, text for your routes. Um, and I care about having content item because, I mean, when you define a not route pattern, that's what you get usually. Then with uh, Jean Thierry's change, at some point we had to do model dot content item dot display text. Okay, model dot anything, and and um, I think there is a confusion here. So I don't know if he made it 
on purpose or if it was um, just uh, unwanted change or well how do you say that um, when there is a war and our casualties like not what's the name what's the word I'm looking for um, side casualties what's the name of the thing what's the word not side effect but um, when there are casualties they are collateral damage thank you so maybe there was a collateral damage uh, but I th or maybe he made, he made it on purpose but he did that because anytime we have um, a liquid template for a shape we do model dot content item to get the content item okay or we do model dot something look into that uh, maybe that's a limitation from fluid um, and and also maybe that's because in razor everything is always model dot something it has to be it has to be because in razor we are doing c sharp and the current context is the page and the page is a class that doesn't have our properties like at content item, okay? So the only thing we can get is a model that is typed um, to the generic type of the Razor page, and model then will provide, like in the view model, dot all the properties like content item, okay? That's why we usually see model, because of Razor. And I'm afraid that because we do too much Razor, we leaked this um, kind of thing into some liquid patterns. Um, so yes, sometimes it makes sense to have a model object, but if we cannot have that, we should not use it because it's much easier to just access a property than to do model dot anything. Doesn't make sense to have model prefix from everything. Uh, any property is from the model. That's the convention in liquid. It's just in Razor, we can't do that because it's strongly typed. So it has to be a property on the generic type uh, that we are passing to the, to the Razor view. So I want, that, I want that we can type content item. And I know there is a, a limitation in, in Fluid that we have to call set value on something, like uh, key value on the context. And, um, and sometimes we just want to pass a set of properties from an object, and there might not be an helper for that. And that might be why also we see models sometimes. Um, so I have to, I will check that, but so this commit I was talking about is um, providing the content item property again by calling, by setting it explicitly when we call render async. Um, so just mention that, creating iScoped distributed cache. Um, so this is a new service. Um, I worked with Jan Thierry on this one. The idea is that um, the idea is that um, caching. So the um, we looked at the perf of um, of Orchard on the front end, and I was trying to explain um, how to make it faster. And to do that. Uh, I took the, um, what page? I took the blog, yeah, the blog post liquid template, and I removed everything. So first, yeah, I removed everything from the template just to see how fast we could be if we didn't render anything. And we were as fast as with rendering everything, which was surprising. Then I started removing everything from the controller that displays something. So if I go, um, if I go, on Orchard, I will show you. Item controller is the one that renders um, content items by default when you use, use AutoRoute, for instance. So display content item ID. So first, first thing it does is load the content item. Okay, easy. If it's there, the published version, then we go on, otherwise we return a 404. Then we check the 
authorization permission for well the permission of view content for this content item and the current user, which can be anonymous. Otherwise, we return for bit or challenge uh, whether the user is already authenticated or not. And then we say, okay, now build the display, which will build a shape containing all the part shapes and everything for this content item. So it will render the display of this content item and we send it this shape to a view that will just call display of the shape that will render the shape. Okay, easy. That's what we do. I'm just worried I'm forgetting someone on the lobby. No. Um, that's what we do. So because I was rendering nothing and it was still the, as as fast or as slow as before, I started to remove everything here. Okay, to see how fast we could be if we do nothing actually. And when we did nothing, we were super fast. But there was a huge gap between the 4,000 requests per second and the 80,000 requests per second when I just removed one line of code. And it was not even when I removed the database. So what I did is that I cached the content item so that it would be loaded once and then taken from the cache. It was not even faster. The thing that made it slow actually is this code authorization service dot authorizing so the user is anonymous and checking that the anonymous users could see something was the bottleneck of the performance um, and looking at that we saw that for each display of the site there will be a database query uh, just to authorize the anonymous user to be able to see something which we expected to be uh, no op, completely free. The only database query we would expect would be that, but uh, because I had cached it, it, there should not be any database query, but there was one because of that. And this is actually a regression that we uh, got at some point. I will show you why. Um, so once I removed that, it was much faster. It was still almost the same because of that line, um, but, um, but yeah, much faster, like, three times faster. Um, so what what's the issue with that is when it authorizes the anonymous user or any other user, well, it's still specific with anonymous user because an authenticated user will have had the claims cached in the user object, in the cookies, for instance. But with the anonymous, nothing was cached. So each new anonymous request would ask for the permission for the anonymous user from the role store and the whole store will do a query all the time. Um, and um, we actually took a PR that was removing the caching of this whole object for some concurrency reasons or when you update an object which is in memory and that was the case. So what we introduced with Gentier is a new uh, service called Scope Distributed Cache. The, the idea is that we want to use distributed cache such that we will store the roles document in memory if you have a single node or in a store that is shared across every node if you have multiple nodes. But we want it scoped, meaning that if you do multiple queries on the same cache entry for the same request, then we will load it from the distributed cache only once. Um, so that's much faster when you have multiple queries. And if you were run locally, there is no network operation. It's just decentralizing an object from the cache to the memory. And it's using distributed because we want to serialize it instead of taking it from memory, such that whenever we ask for, for, for an entry, we can change it and we are sure that every request will have its own instance and won't try to update uh, an instance that is shared by, that is used by yet another request. So we made this one and we used it in the, in the role store here. Instead of iMemory cache, which will put everything in memory and shared by um, all the requests, now it's a scope, this will be cache. And the code is actually also much simpler with that. You just pass it an object and it will store it using the key of the type of the object in this case. Or you can pass it a custom key if you want. So set async and um, get async. And also what we change is that here it was doing a load hole. So it was loading all the time to find by name. So it was when you do find by name with the anonymous 
or name, it will load from the database every time. So I let you imagine what will happen if you had um, some code path that will do multiple authorization checks, um, that will do every time a single uh, database query. So Carl, if you are looking at that, maybe you are hit by that on GraphQL because GraphQL also does some authorization. Um, so this should help a lot performance and this helped us a lot. Um, good. And the next step to make it even faster is to introduce some caching here to reuse the same content item if it hasn't changed or have a micro cache for like a few seconds of the same content item. That will improve the perf like a lot. Um, but that made it uh, faster in terms of just that change, makes everything faster for any website in terms of um, um, of RPS and latency. Um, fix typo. Validate that the value is an integer when indexing, so that if you pass something that is not an integer, it won't fail. Uh, fix, admin URL prefix, fix, admin URL prefix. It has been merged, so the last route, oh, I didn't know it was merged. Uh, fix remaining routes. Is it still a warning? Yeah, it's still, still a warning. I um, haven't made any changes to the um, the other one yet. Just the just the routes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we, once we have the default route, then we can remove the warning. And fixing index name usage in the search controller. Okay, good. Um, so that, I see three things. What is the three? Oh, the message is here. Chat. Camera. Okay, you are still on Skype. So. Um, I will mute myself on Skype in this way, at least. Boom. Am I muted on? No, I'm, I'm fine, right? You can hear me. Um, so, 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 now, um, demos, topics, um, there is one topic we need to talk about, um, the branding. Um, branding. So, uh, last week there was a, a discussion on Gitter about um, how websites should use the Orchard brand. Orchard CMS, Orchard Project, Orchard Core, Orchard whatever, and what we should allow legally, or at least in terms of community, uh, so that there is no conflict of interest between all our partners, that someone will claim to be whatever Orchard entity, officially or not officially, on purpose or not on purpose, and that we can as a community, because there is nothing nothing personal here. The only owner of the brand is the Net Foundation. But so we can agree on what the rules are to when we want to brand a website. Um, so we have lots of uh, partner websites, and we've had also many more by the past. Um, I could mention all the sites from uh, Antoine, his personal sites, or the ones he makes in French, or all the languages. Um, sites. We used to have more in Orchard 1. Uh, I can think of Orchard Dojo from um, Lombic. They have a blog on the same. Is Orchard? Yeah, maybe the blogs on the is also on the Orchard Dojo website. Uh, there is a YouTube channel by Lombic, um, the Lombic channel that uh, hosts all the um, Orchard videos. There used to be uh, Orchard, uh, what was the name? Orchard, Orchard, Orchard Pros. Orchard, Orchard Pros, yes. Orchard Pros, which uses the name Orchard, okay. Orchard Dojo, um, there is, a, I think it's the name of the channel is Lombic. Yes, it's Lombic Technologies Limited. Okay. Um, what else? So we have the orchardproject.net, which is 
for whatever reason. Is it .com or .net? Um, which is for whatever reason. These ones are for whatever reason. The Wait one second, I have a notification that someone wants to join. Not anymore, so maybe it worked. Okay. Um, which are somehow the official ones, whatever official means. Um, project. And I don't think, there is one, what's the name from uh, David? Aiden, Orchard? Um, Orchardcore.io. Orchardcore.io. This one also is. Uh, and there's also Orchardskills.com. Orchardskills. Okay, that's the new one. Okay. And um, so what we saw uh, a few weeks ago is that uh, I won't mention names. So we saw new website, a new website. Uh, I think Orchard, Orchard CMS .net. Um that kind of like OrchardCore.io looks like an official um, domain name, okay, which is one thing, but also the language looked like it was the official um, website. Whereas when you go on Orchard Pros, Orchard Dojo, or whatever, um, it's obvious uh, that it's not the official website for uh, co co for communicate communicating on the on on the evolution of a project or, or the links and everything. Um, so that was confusing, and that plus the uh, this same name was used also for um, Twitter account and the YouTube channel, and um, so I think that the 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 agreement was like that everyone is fine um, providing some content in their own website, uh, either just as a community partnership or for professional reasons, like you need to make money because you're a consultant on Orchard and you want to advertise on whatever uh, skills you have on Orchard. So totally fine to advertise and mention Orchard in any way. Um, and to show off what you can do in terms of services and your portfolio, even if it just decides to publish articles and YouTube videos and everything. Um, so we are all we all agree that it's super useful for for the community because it will just grow the Orchard community. Not only that, it will grow the Orchard community, but lots of people can only use tools if there are professional uh, services outside of the open source community that can provide um, consulting and um, development, custom development for these companies because they won't use Orchard if there is no um, company that can provide that. And as much as we can, as many as we can, because for locations, for um, availability, we need the, the more the, that we can have. Um, so this is totally fine to talk about or to write articles, even if it's not related to our main websites, like Sipke makes, what's the name of the meet, uh, what's the name of the meetup, what's the, no, uh, medium, medium articles. Uh, he used to have a blog also, and it was the, the most read articles. People were also always, always say, oh, I read the, 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 20 parts article about making a module, and it was not in our website, it was in Sipka's blog, so he was the most famous developer because of that. So that's super uh, uh, fine to have your own site talking about anything about Orchard and reusing the word Orchard and showing that you are the, the you have the skills to, to work on Orchard. But here, the, the, the fact that the sites were called literally Orchard CMS and uh, the naming the the wording was stating we are Orchard CMS, and I think I saw literally that we are Orchard CMS or something like that. We are Orchard, and not we are Orchard specialist, Orchard consultant, Orchard developers. Um, was making it very confusing, and I didn't see anyone who was not confused by the by the wording. Then um, you could also ask, but who is like? OrchardProject.net and OrchardCore.net. And I think I saw that, yeah, why does, I don't know, Antoine or Sebastian can can write that? Well, it just happens that we contribute to, this, to the 
official sites and anyone can contribute to the official sites and publish anything or change the content. It's just that Antoine is the, the one who takes responsibility to, to work on that and find the time to work on that. And that's totally fine. But, and if we decided, I assume, all together, since the beginning, we were using OrchardProject.net uh, from when it was created by uh, Microsoft and Play's only, that, um, that we use this website to, to be the, the official entry point for um, the Orchard uh, contributors and community. Um, at some point, it was not Antoine, it was more Lombic who was um, helping on the content and created the, the, the blog post entries directly on the site. So anyone who's in the community and asks for an account can have an account to change, to update the content or to work on the, the site infrastructure. Um, so just, uh, just to say that that's how we make the, the official websites for, um, that's, what, that's why Antoine and I and some others make the official websites uh, on these URLs because just we are the contributors and that, that, that's what we do. Uh, but anyone could do that. And the same way we have docs.orchard.core.net because Antoine did everything and he said, okay, I want to help. Can I do that? And we said, yes, do that. Nobody else wants to do that. So we are fine with that. Uh, so just to, to explain why these ones are the official ones and why these ones are handled by myself and Antoine. Um, then, um, just so that everyone in the committee knows or agrees on how we should um, communicate with the name Orchard or Orchard Core or Orchard CMS names and not abuse the naming, so we 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 all agree on some small rules so that every partner can find um, a good relationship with the community to advertise on, on their own website. Um, so, so by the past, we had Orchard Pros, uh, Orchard Dojo. It never has been an issue to use the name Orchard because when I see Orchard Pros, yes, that, that does, okay. It doesn't look like an official website or at least nothing is stating that is the official Orchard site or Orchard CMS site or whatever. Orchard Dojo is the same thing. So I think there is no issue and we never thought about any, writing any recommendation about naming that. But just with those websites, so uh, I assume there is some um, change going on, I've been told, um, so that's good. Um, we are open to discussion and to to see what people want to do. And if you have questions, no, no, not, not an issue. Uh, even on this site, which the domain name could be could 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 be confusing. When you go on the site, it's clear that it's from um, uh, David, who is a, a consultant and who just wants to advertise his um, um, knowledge and services on the orchard. And that's stated directly that. Uh, they have experience in writing Orchard websites and they do that and that and that. This is a portfolio and they can do that for you and whatever. So it's very clear. There is no confusion there. Um, so yeah, just um, a discussion about that. Um, if So I haven't uh, reached out to the Net Foundation who actually owns the, uh, the brand, the name and the project. Uh, we are just contributors, all of us. Um, I just talk the more, that's it. Uh, and uh, But if we will see some abuse of the name and confusion with the brand, um, there is a, a statement in the license that says you can't use Orchard without the permission of the foundation. Um, we are not at that point, but if there, if there is no agreement on all of us, uh, around all of us with how to use a brand and it's abused, then we, I'm sure the Net Foundation will have to, to look into that and to, to decide what is good and what is wrong. And I don't, want to, I don't want to go to that point where we even have to write something so that we, we, def, we have to define rules, explicit rules, and then people will be like, yeah, but look at this one. He's got the IO domain name and I just have the .org, so I should, no, that's, uh, that's bad. So we'll see how it goes. Um, we'll give it some time to see how how things evolve. Some people have been more upset by that than others. Uh, I was just worried it could be it could be confusing, and some people have been more than worried about that. Um, so we'll we'll give it some time to 
to see how it goes now we can uh, discuss about it anything I didn't mention or any comments as usual I don't want to be the only one to talk Orchard Beginners, tryorchard.net. This tryorchard.net is kind of so of, what is tryorchard.net? Yeah, it's nothing. Oh, no, it's not nothing. Oh, it's Lombic. Oh, they made it. Yeah, that's the first uh, tryorchard we were using. Lombic made it. And then uh, Antoine made one on Orchard Core. And it, it became the, the one pointed by the official website. But this one was the first that was made by Lombic. Who owns that? Yeah, it's good. Maybe Lombic also. No. Oh, Abhishek. Okay. Uh, my time is right. Stackations. Oh, that's you. You made that. Um, I saw that. Uh, is, uh, okay, so feel free to share anything about that. We can continue to talk on Gitter, but I heard nobody here. So I assume you don't disagree with what I said, or you're too shy to say it. I like when people disagree because we can have a discussion, and I like to change my mind also. Um, Sorry, I just agree. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I know you agree. It's kind of. <laughs> That's why I'm not saying anything. So, uh, Tyson, is that it? Tyson made a request on Stack Exchange um, because um, that's how Stack Exchange works. If you want to create a custom community, you need to push for an ID, and people need to approve and follow that ID. So, so Tyson, you are not Hank, are you? Okay, so Hank, well, yes, my first name is Hank. Okay, Tyson, give me, I'm, I was confused. Uh, so Hank uh, created this suggestion, which is to create a Stack Exchange website. Once again, there is a request to join the meeting. Agree. So to create a Stack Exchange website, and uh, apparently how it works is that once you create a um, suggestion, we need people to go on the page to a so what do we need to do? Do you want to talk, Hank? He doesn't have a mic, but uh, I went through the process and and it basically it's it's written right there in the in the sidebar. We need a total of I believe 40 questions. Um, yeah, there you go. 48 no. more followers, 40 more questions with a score of 10 or more. I see. Yeah. To move to the next phase, and our phase is to go to next. Phase. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, I, that looks like a, a good idea as long as it has some uh, traction and that's what the rules try to ensure. Yeah. Uh, what is here? So that's a good point to talk about it during this meeting. We need people to join every person of us for five questions and create five questions community. I don't want to have the system either, okay? Um, it's good to communicate about it, but I won't force anyone to do that if they don't care. But I assume anyone from the community using any means to to grow an orchard and to know orchard has had questions or answers. Okay, Sipka more, has more answers than questions, but Hank might have more questions than answers. So anyone with, who hears that might be might want to go on this URL. Um, so is there, do we have, ah, how do we find this URL easily? Um, uh, it's on Gitter. Where else could it be? Duplicate Gitter questions. Yes, anything that is asked on Gitter should have an answer in Doc or in Stack Overflow for sure. A more question than answer. Um, I can tweet about it. I, I will tweet this URL. I will copy paste it. I will keep it open. I hope I won't lose it. I'm sure you will remind me. That, but well, that's my notepad. Um, so I will tweet about it so the link can be shared also and people will go on that. Uh, where was I? Where is my window here? Um, 
So we need to register and vote for questions and ask a question. What was a question I answered this morning was like, my controller doesn't appear, my module doesn't appear. And it's a question that, <laughs> that is asked every day and the answer is reference the module for my project. It's always this, this question like, so we should add it and everyone will vote for it. Um, okay, someone needs to ask a new question. Um, but yeah, uh, definitely we should try to do that. And then if we can reach the goal that is defined here, then awesome. Um, I think I think that's also a way for us. You know, we don't have a, well, we have a, a chat, which is Gitter. Antoine has tried to push for a discourse uh, solution, um, but it's hard to maintain and we need to host it on Azure and um, yeah, so maybe that would be a solution for to have a custom location where we can um, contribute for questions and answers, discussions about specific topics. That might be good. So I hope it works. So I will tweet about it. We can talk about it on Gitter again and remind it during the meetings. Uh, thank you, Hank, for uh, trying that. Uh, and my my preference is that when we get the same question, even twice, then we should have it in the documentation. They are sharing videos which shows how to use some feature, which is fine since it's winner. Uh, videos which shows how to use some feature of virtual call. No, I think we should just. What do you mean? Since this we should we not also make sure that it is accurate like we do with Antoine documentation. It's not Antoine's documentation. It's, it's documentation and we all contribute to that. Then this is their YouTube channel. I mean, we can't, we can't do anything. We can just comment on if someone thinks that something doesn't work, we can just comment on that. Or if we know something is wrong, we can, also, we can just also comment on that. What we can do also, if we see a nice video, is point to it from the documentation, uh, like we do for the Lambda channel, so the demos and everything, uh, or any demo we've done by the past. So if uh, there is a topic that is covered by one of these videos, wherever the source is, uh, we should point to it in the documentation. Just my comment. And if you think there is a mistake or some details which uh, are not um, complete, then the comment section in the video should be should usually be fine. Until someone makes a better video on the topic and then we point to the better video. But if we have three videos on the same topic, that's also good because usually they don't cover the same thing or the same detail. Uh, so. So yeah, I think we should link at least to the videos uh, from the documentation if they make sense for a specific topic. Um, anything else? So I will keep the link here also. Oops. Mention so Stack Exchange. How is it called? It's not a room, is it a community? Q&A site. Mm, questions, comments, topics? every dog should be at least accurate. And I will say, I prefer a dog that is not super accurate than no dog at all. If you can, pro if you can contribute to make it better, yes, that's always good, but sometimes. And it's hard to change a video. If it's, a, if it's an article, it's easy to send a PR and to change it. If it's a video, it's hard. Like there are videos we reference still today that I made two years ago, they're completely not accurate and people still watch it and they learn things. 
and sometimes they come to us and are, hey, I can't find this version or like this package. Where is this package? And well, it changed two years ago. Sorry, the video can't be edited. That's kind of hard, but that's how it is. Um, yeah, videos are bad. We should stop videos, just writing text. Uh, but this, okay. Any other comments, questions? Good, that makes sense. Yes, because you <laughs> said you want you want arguments. Also, Jasma is is um, oh, thank you. appeasing okay. you with with you know. Oh, an I see. So, yeah, no, so I, I, oh, in your name, I'm giving him uh, your kudos. Yeah, I always like people to talk about things. Exactly. Like and whenever I ask for someone to say something, you say I, we just agree. And I thank you for that. At least you say something. I feel less alone. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone always agrees. No, usually that's why we we miss also uh, Daniel, Daniel and um, yeah, and um, what's his Zoltan and, and Nicholas Main. I miss Nicholas Main. Yeah, he talks for nothing. Nicholas Nick Nick talks for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but he's yeah, still the second most contributor on the project, so I won't say anything. He started on Shutcore. Is the best knowledgeable for many things, yeah. Um, but to yeah to also argue Daniel was the best. He will make us change our minds many times. Yeah. Um, okay. So Thierry is asking a question. It should be asked on Stack, on stack Exchange. So I want to answer that. Um, but why content type definition are on file? Um, yeah. To answer that, I think you know the answer now because we answered on Gitter. Um, we used to before you join the project. Uh, during your uh, trials with Python, we uh, converted the content type definition from database to file system by default, uh, so we could work um, collaboratively when you're in the dev team, um, and it will be stored in Git, so whenever someone will add a new content type, then the other ones will get it. Uh, if it's stored in database, then you have to share the database uh, with each other, and that's harder to, to manage. So the default is to use content type definitions. It's read on startup and whenever it changes, which means never. And uh, if you want to work um, in a distributed environment, then you enable the feature that stores it in database. Uh, and that's it. Yeah. Um, so why why was it an issue? I, I don't remember. Why was it an issue for you in your case? Because it shouldn't be an issue. Or maybe when you deploy it. Uh, yeah, uh, I overwrite the app data uh, folder. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is there a I way that uh, the app data folder remain untouched during publish? So you can re you, re you can exclude it from your project. In your project, you can say ignore app data. It's in the project file, the main project file. I don't think that's a deployment option anymore. Yeah, there was an option. Maybe with the next framework in VS, ah, yeah. but okay. now it's different. Yeah, okay. that go and new Visual Studio and new deployment. So it's an option in the project file now. Um, and the idea is that the default is to use SQLite and this file, so everything from app data should be pushed all the time. And if you don't want to push the local database or these things, yes, you exclude app data. You don't deploy app data anymore. Uh, because if you had the issue with content type definitions, you should have had the issue with SQLite also or anything else, uh, app settings. But yeah, it was more obvious with content type definitions when you create the site. Yeah, I, I get. It. So it's not for you. You should use the database one. Um, path work in Orchard. I can't find any in the docs, and I'm having issues with getting all my path to work. What do you mean, your path? Maybe serve the static. If this, if this is about the static files served by modules, the convention is module name, well, HTTP your site slash module name slash the name of the file in the dub root folder. Um, 
And oh yes, I didn't see the oh we didn't measure PR, but uh, Jasmine has a PR. Uh, I forgot to comment on that. There are some uh, things to remove, maybe some sentences like happy coding or whatever, something like that, that usually only Nick does. Um, <laughs> so new guide about how to use Docker and how to use it in the context of WSL2. It's not about bad English, nothing to do with that. It's just you added too much. Let me show you. WSL2. And this is some comments I made to Nick by the past. Um, et voilà. I don't think that's necessary. <laughs> that's just an example. Doesn't add anything. Too, too personal. Just to show off that you have a, a keyboard with accents. Yeah, because I'm French, so that's fun. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, all done. Too late. Um, all good. Next meeting on two, on Thursday. Will use Teams. I don't think I will join on Skype because the usual um, people joining the meeting. All already know um, five people and they are all here um, and so we'll start on teams directly next week I will still open Skype to give some time for people who don't know about it and maybe also because you have lost the URL I will however change the uh, link on the website to teams and also the redirection if you don't remember we have an orchardproject.net slash meeting I assume we have it also on Orchard Core, the net slash meeting. Yes, okay. So I will change this URL, this little um, uh, redirection to point to the Teams meeting also. Okay, did anyone have any issue with the Teams environment today? The video sharing worked, the sound was good. Was it better or worse than usual? It worked pretty good for me. Uh, the only thing that I ran into was when I launched, launched the application and I wanted to sign in using my organization account. It kept uh, in a it kept in a in a startup mm -hmm. loop, so it would crash okay. and then start again and crash. And what but, did you do to stop that? Uh, just sign in as a guest. Okay, I had the same issue when I actually tried to join your organization last year. Hmm. This is funny, yeah. And I stopped joining your organization. We used Skype then. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> it broke my Teams client. I had to install and to reinstall it. Mm. Because I could not even join my organization anymore. So oh, so it, it, oh, it broke it. All so yes. I couldn't even use it anymore. Wow. So we'll try to use it after that, but uh, we'll see. Um, okay, so apparently everyone is fine with that. Um, all good then. Thanks, everyone. Um, thank you, Sipka, for the conversations. I'm sure. My some pleasure. People, and thank you also, Sotiris, for the conversation. I wished everyone had a mic and could. Uh, yeah, because you know there are some, some, some. Um, I have some colleagues in uh, in in Microsoft who do like the Channel Nine and everything and the SPNet Live, and they use. Uh, it's like one way. They talk and everyone listens, and that's fine. That's the the, the model they use, and because, because also their audience is much broader than uh, ours. I love our uh, format where it's open, anyone can share and talk and ask and just talk. And um, so if you want to talk, that's even better because I have to talk less, okay? And we can have discussions and arguments and and talk about things. Yeah, that's the best. Good? I prefer that. And that's why also we do that on Teams. Otherwise, we'll do it on YouTube and you will just hear myself talking about whatever I want. <laughs> and that's yeah, it. that's why I don't talk as much. I hate hearing myself. I don't hear myself. I just, no, you hear yourself, you hear your voice. Yeah, well, when I when I look back at the recording. I don't look at it. I don't yeah. look at it. Yeah, that, that might be a good idea. Okay. Thanks, All everyone. Right. Thanks, See you guys. Bye-bye. Take care.